bidding practice. You want to be doing this in your partnership to actually improve as a partnership. Because when you go and play, there's so many things that you need to discuss at the end. Uh, but bidding, you can do it and bidding practice away from the table, non-competitive situation. Uh, you can do this to actually make sure you both understand the meanings of your bids. You can have good discussions. It is really important if you want to improve as a partnership to actually do it. So what I'm going to do today is talk through about how best you should be doing bidding practice and also where you can actually do it. So there are two main places that you can actually go. Uh, the first one is in BBO, you can go up to practice and then start a bidding table and then you can uh, sit down or start a table and what you can do is you click history and then you sit, uh, you, you can reserve it for your partner, I'll just chuck a robot in and you can put some robots in and then you can go ahead and actually bid these hands. You can also go to deal source and uh, set some constraints or you can have saved deals kind of both of these are a bit difficult um, also whenever you set constraints here i'll just set a basic constraint let's say i want to practice game and i'll put in a constraints of north south have between 24 and 40 high card points okay that's it and then when you finish with the board you can click redeal in i'll jump over here but you might have missed it uh, when I click redeal, it says some of the hand types for constraint one will be ignored. I literally just said, come on, just give us some of these high card points. That's all I actually did there. Uh, so that's a uh, BBO bidding practice, uh, but there's a better spot that I actually prefer. And I think there's some really cool things happening with it. And it's a new spot and it's called qbids.com, C-U-E-B-I-D-S.com. But what sort of things can you actually do on qbids.com? So firstly, uh, they have events. So they have the same uh, bidding problems that you can do in a weekly event or a daily event. Uh, these are eight board bidding problems that you can actually uh, compare with other people. Uh, you can also do challenges. So you can start a challenge where uh, you can choose your partner and um, you can also get a different partnership to try and bid those same hands and you can see who actually does better. And also you can just do normal practice. So you can start a practice session. You can choose your partner, say how many boards you want to do. Do you want robots or not? And then also there is deal types. Now, what they're doing is they're adding more deal types as you go, uh, but uh, they have sort of some free ones. So you can say, hey, I want to practice bidding my balance 12 to 14 counts. Uh, but then uh, if you want to support them, uh, you get access to more and more different types of specific uh, bidding problems that might come up. And also if you're missing a deal type or want it, you can suggest it and they'll probably consider adding uh, more of those there. So when you, do a practice session. One of the things that happens is it'll uh, give you all 12 hands that you've actually got. One of the cool things about Qubits is both you and your partner don't need to be online at the same time. You can do it at the same time or you can do it actually separately. Uh, so you could do it just sort of like on your way to work or whenever you've got some spare time, uh, you just do your bids and then it'll send it off to uh, your partner. And when they get a chance, they'll bid. And then across the day, whenever you get a moment or two, you can go in and uh, bid your hands. Uh, but if we jump in, you can also do it uh, hand by hand and both be online at the same time. So here it says partners thinking. And if partner makes a bid, we're looking like, oh, what should I actually do? And here it's got the bidding up here, diamond, two clubs, two diamonds. And it's got the levels you can bid here and the bids that are available and double and pass in this case because the opponent's a bid. And then after I bid, it'll say that uh, partner's thinking and they can have time to choose whether they want to bid or not. And uh, then you can choose if you actually want to pass it out. And once you've done this, it'll go, <laughs> I kind of find this funny. Confirm it. Are you sure it might end the bidding? This one, it definitely will end the bidding, um, but it'll also do it if, uh, you know, you're potentially passing out if the opponents don't uh, do it. Um, and then uh, it can display the whole hand. And then what you can do is you can just go on to the next hand or, or not. So it'll also give you some ratings here. So here I we let them play in three diamonds and it's got this score underneath and it's got what the best option is. And it's also got um, some star ratings and a percentage. Um, so what does all this actually mean? So 
here uh, shows what our final contract was, but it says that the best thing we could do is actually uh, proceed to three spades instead. And the number below is sort of like what the expected score is for this. Um, so it says 111, which would mean that, you know, most of the time that you'd be making three spades, but some of the time you'd be going. So it's balancing that plus 140 with that uh, minus 50 sort of score. Whereas here, uh, our minus 118 means most of the time the opponents are making uh, three diamonds. Some of the times they're making four diamonds there as well. So the highlights what the best we could do is, and then it also gives us a star rating. And basically this is just a, a comparison of um, our expected value to what the best expected value is. Now it's worthwhile uh, taking this with a grain of salt sometimes uh, because you, you don't always want to be trying to get to like the, the double dummy best expected. Sometimes they're sort of a bit oddball contracts that you can do, but it's generally a good guy that, hey, maybe I didn't do some so crash hot here. And then once you've done with this hand, you can uh, click on and it'll take you to the next hand that you can actually bid, or you can actually uh, click back here and this will show uh, all the hands that you've actually got. Um, it shows the completed ones. Uh, these ones that are a bit black are your partner's bidding. And this little bit red is up to us. So what you could do is you could just go through and then bid all the ones where it's actually your turn to bid. So we could go through and go, it goes one heart. Well, I'm going to be passing with this hand and then go back and let's choose the next one. And here, uh, part, we've got a nice hand, let's bid one spade. And then after this, you could also just click this button, which will take us to and seven, the next one that we've actually got a bid available for us. And you can choose, do you wanna do it? And you can go through and try and bid all of those in the practice session. Um, now, when doing bidding practice, why is bidding practice actually really important for improving as a partnership? What do I actually like to get out of it? What do I like to try and do? So with bidding practice, this is great for improving partnerships because you can just discuss different options. So what I like to do when I'm doing bidding practice is I like to note down what are my thoughts or what other opinions did I have? So if we jump into that first hand, well, partner bid two clubs. Hey, they've got all this spade suit. Maybe they should have bid a Michael's Cupid. If they did bid two clubs, maybe they should have bid three spades. And we can discuss all these sorts of options to see where should partner have actually gotten to. Also, not just the options and alternatives that you can do, you also want to describe what did you actually think partner was showing? What sort of point range? Is that what you expected them to come down with? Often when I'm bidding, I might try a bid and then um, I'll do some more experimental bids and ask my partner, is that what they would actually expect from that auction? But you can experiment and get a better feel for what's actually going on and ask partner, would this work, not work? What do they actually think about it? And what this does is it helps you and your partner align your thoughts and your bidding process. And you can sort of help understand how they approach thinking, what they think they're going, so that when you're actually at the table, you two should mesh a bit better. Also, it's really valuable for, if you get to a sequence and you're like, I actually don't know what it would mean if I bid a particular thing. And then you can actually just ask your partner if they know what it means, or you can get a little bit of an agreement there. So uh, here, um, some of the pros of uh, QBids that I really like is firstly, you don't both need to be online at the same time. One of the challenges for doing bidding practice is just organizing with your partner to both be at that certain time and be able to do it. Here, as you see, you can go in and just bid uh, 12 hands across a day whenever suits you and you don't actually need to be online. I also really like uh, these daily and weekly events. So um, you can join these and you can see what you can do. Bridge, I think, is a really social game and being able to compare and have events and see how you actually do against other people is kind of cool as well. It's also got features where you can actually uh, share some of uh, your boards with other people so you can actually discuss pretty easily. And there was also that rating system that I'm kind of like. The cons of it, things that I don't particularly like, are a bit nitpicky, but. So one of my little nitpicks is this login screen. This is just like uh, early into the thing. I'm pretty sure it might change at some point. Uh, but after I logged in, uh, I knew I wanted to get started and I had to add a friend to do that. So I come here and it says add a friend and you click that and nothing actually happens. 
What you actually have to do is come down to friends and then find out their key and then just type that in there. Um, so that's what you actually need to do to add a friend. But in this login screen, I clicked it a few times and nothing actually. So that's the one of the first issues. The other issue that I have is uh, so they're all pretty minor. So um, one of them was that confirm bid option when the hand's finishing. So what you actually do to do to change that is you can come up here and you can untick confirm final bid. Um, but it's currently just set on um, automatically at the start. And another issue I got is just in the card ordering, it's uh, spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs, just like, you know, it'd be nice if it was like black, red, black, red, or something like that. Also, I'm not a huge fan of the four color deck. Um, and I reckon I'd make the cards a bit bigger, but these are all small aesthetic things that can actually be changed. But I'd love to know what your thoughts are. What do you reckon the pros and cons of this are and which one do you actually prefer? So if you want to improve as a partnership, I really recommend you actually try out partnership bidding. Find some time to actually practice your bidding, discuss with your partner and get there. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks all for watching and we'll see you next time.